Hi, this is James Governor from Redhook, aka Monk Chips, and I'm here with Marge Breyer from SAP Business Objects. We're here at uh, SAP TechEd 09 in Vienna. Um, so, Marge, why don't you tell, tell us, or tell Redhook TV, what do you do at, at, at SAP Business Objects? What's your role? Yeah, so sure. I, I general manage the NetWeaver and the intelligence platform of groups, and so basically I'm responsible for all of the middleware, all of the uh, business intelligence, and information management products. Okay, in terms of the product management side of things. Uh, yeah, but uh, basically overall business ownership. Okay. Um, so I thought I'd watch your career for a while. We knew each other at Sun and, and, yeah. and then BEA. I think one of the things that I found really interesting um, at, at, at BEA uh, was the fact that well, when you came into a role, you decided to not throw stuff out. Yep. So you're someone that announced the liquid computing um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, marketing program. And I think that's very interesting. In terms of joining this new culture of SAP and so on, how did you, uh, how did you find that this notion of how do we, do we fit into the new, new, new culture? Did you feel a desire to rip stuff up, or did you think that, that actually from uh, that, that actually things were pretty good? Did you feel the need to have a revolution? So uh, I think there is. Uh, I always feel the need to um, to look at what is a really big change that can make, or, or let's call it a, a really important change that can make a major difference. Mm -hmm. And in some situations, it takes a larger change than a, than a, small, than a smaller change. Um, in our situation, um, I, what I felt like is we have uh, two portfolios, NetWeaver and Business Objects portfolios, that have come together over the last, uh, call it 18 months. The thing that has been interesting is that uh, NetWeaver has been all about um, serving the application, serving the content that's been associated with business processes. Mm -hmm. um, business objects has been always, you know, always neutral in terms of whatever content is out there because we can never have met a database or an application that we didn't like. Right? A very different view of consistency. Right, and so, so when, you, when you start looking at the two, the question is um, how, how do you then um, kind of create a, um, a synergy that couldn't have been there before, right? And um, I believe that the marriage is really around how do you take um, the analytics, the insights, um, and some of the user friendliness of business objects and uh, marry that with the process context and the, uh, and the content that we know about what's going on in the business at SAP. Okay. So we, we you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We were talking earlier about uh, Moneyball, uh, yeah, yeah. This is the Michael Lewis book. Yeah. Uh, uh, out the open days. Tell me a little bit about that. What does that have to do with business? What's the, what's the deal with? Yeah, so, so I, think, I think the interesting thing about, uh, about that book is, um, you know, whatever sports is a business, no matter how you look at it, right? It's about winning games, getting fans, doing all of that, which is, quite frankly, the same kind of business, you know, most of us are in. How do you get more revenue and get more fans and brand loyalty, etc. And uh, what I love about that story is it's about um, a, a leader who wanted to figure out how to systematically win more revenue or games in the most efficient way possible. And by being smarter about, uh, or having more insight about what, what actually correlates to winning games, um, in this case Billy Bean was able to figure out how to measure what matters most to win games. And I think that's actually um, kind of the, um, the whole aspiration of intelligence. How do you help an executive to be, or a, a regular person, to be more informed every day so that they can make, make better decisions in whatever business process they're in? And, uh, and I'm really passionate about it. And so the, um, that's, I mean, so I just thought it was a great story. It's practically better decision making based on the data. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So one sort of area that, that, that seems like it's going to be really important would be whether we call it social network analysis or that's as good a term as any. The fact that so many of the important, actually, business transactions are to do with conversations. You bet. Um, it seems to me that that's one of the, the real opportunities for the new SAP business objects, for this, mm -hmm. this merging of, 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 of kind of business yeah. objects capability in NetWeaver. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, is that sure. something that SAP would get involved in? Or? Yeah, so absolutely. In fact, we, um, we saw this trend about uh, just over two years ago at Business Objects, and, and we bought a text analytics company. Uh, to go ahead and get all of the structured analysis so that you know you could look at nouns, verbs, adjectives, etc., uh, and start looking at, for example, um, customer support. It's great to know that um, that in a call center you had uh, 1,000 calls about a certain product, um, etc., but it's a whole different thing to understand 
whether if somebody was saying, hey, the product was broken, whether they were using words that were um, strong mm -hmm. in, in a negative way, or whether they were just asking for a question, right? So that sentiment makes an entirely different um, outcome you know, added to the quantitative data. And so every step of the way, as, as we look at um, you know, meeting records that are typically voice and video, as we look Absolutely. at um, you know, sales transactions that have a whole bunch of uh, unstructured things in it, basically any process but, but, but quote to collect is, uh, is very, very unstructured. And so we have to have both the structured data from the applications and the, and the easily repeatable things, um, along with the unstructured and intuitive nature it actually glues the whole business together. And so we're super you know, passionate about this and we're trying to bring that into the whole semantic layer um, so that we can, we can understand um, both sides of you. And this is, this is really the new frontier, isn't it? Or at least one of the new yeah, frontiers. Absolutely. Of yeah, so if you look, again, if you look at any core business process like customer acquisition, um, there's so much um, unstructured white space, if you will. Mm -hmm. And in order to really understand how to acquire customers better and faster than your competitors, You've got to know the whole thing, not just the structured part, mm -hmm. but you know, who's making great decisions and why. Yeah, I mean, you talked about the effectiveness of selling <coughs> yeah. earlier, and, and uh, I only think that some of it is the numbers game. Is you just, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, <laughs> but you know, the, the, it's just that the, if you have a salesman that's really just milking a customer, yeah. maybe they're making lots of touch points to that organization. But I think, I think. And you know, perhaps yeah. perhaps we can move forward with the data right. on this. Yeah. It's it, it is partly a numbers game. That, yeah. that it's just maybe you know, obviously the more people you meet, the more likely you're going to be able to, to sell something. Um, and are these the kinds of metrics that you might begin to sure. understand? Better? Yeah, absolutely. Because um, you know, it, it was interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a um, I had a kid come to the house on Friday night, uh, who is working his way through college, uh, selling Cutco. Uh, cutlery, okay. knives or whatever, right? And um, and I had a friend with me and said, oh, you know, what we should have done is had two or three other folks from the neighborhood um, be here at the meeting that, you know, you would have gotten a little bit better, right? Yep. He's like, nope, I'm only measured on numbers of appointments. Uh, and I said, oh, that's really interesting. So, I mean, so it's not whether you could get a room full of people, and it's like, no, I needed to get high quality touch points, right? Yeah, well, and I mean, that's all technology. Yeah that they have, right? To, so, to bring it back to the call right. center, I mean, the idea yeah. that you have call centers purely counted on the number of transactions they do, exactly. as opposed to customer satisfaction, exactly. that's insane. In, indeed, and so and so you have to start looking at kind of the um, the soft and the hard side of it, or the, you know, whatever you want to say, the you know, right and left brain, the unstructured and structured. Bringing that together means for a methodology. No company is just structured. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess uh, I'll, I'll be finished with a question that I know you won't answer because that's much fun. <laughs> Are we going to need some new brands here or a new brand? Uh, I won't answer it. I definitely won't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, well. I think we have great. I think our brands are very strong, and if we have new categories, we'll consider it. Well, you're talking about new categories. Could be. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks.